tonight. We report on a man accused of shooting at a Royal City police officer, and we preview 4th of July entertainment across Grant County. What's happening in sports, Bob? Plenty, Amber. The Apple Sox and Sweets go at it in game two of their three-game series, and the Mariners and Padres mix it up in San Diego. Here's a quick peek at our Weather Center forecast. Hello everybody, hot and dry conditions continue to dominate our region. I'll let you know how the 4th of July weekend weather is panning out in just a few moments. I'm Amber Jenks and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. David Santos is running from Royal City Police after allegedly shooting at officers. The 35-year-old Hispanic man is described as having black hair and brown eyes. The Royal City Police stated he stands 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighs about 215 pounds. He was last seen driving a blue 2000 Dodge Durango with Washington license plate AUY5187. On Monday night, Royal City Police responded to a complaint on Cherry Street Northeast in Royal City. A woman told an officer Santos reportedly violated a no-contact order. The officers found the suspect, but Santos reportedly drove away from the officer and pointed a rifle out of the driver's side window and fired around toward the officer. Witnesses said he fired two more shots later in pursuit. The officer lost sight of the vehicle. Anyone with any information about Santos is asked to call 509-762-1160. People in Grant County are being asked to stay safe this 4th of July or even refrain from lighting off fireworks due to dry conditions. Reporter Joe Utter has more information on firework laws across the county. While state law does not allow Grant County to enact an emergency ban on fireworks this year, officials are urging people to be extremely cautious or even save their fireworks for New Year's. All legal fireworks are allowed in unincorporated Grant County, but laws in each city vary. Moses Lake has a complete ban on firework use. Efreda bans the use of aerial fireworks but does allow safe and sane fireworks. The city of Quincy also allows the use of safe and sane fireworks. The cities of George, Soap Lake, and Royal City do not have any restrictions. With very dry conditions across the county and recent large wildfires, fire and city officials are urging residents to not use fireworks during the 4th of July weekend. Grant County Fire District 3 Chief Don Fortier said this week the dryness level in the area is comparable to the usual conditions for mid-August. Fortier said he hopes people don't light off fireworks this weekend. I wish they wouldn't. I wish they would save them for the uh, New Year's Eve because it's just terribly, terribly dry out there and it, and it doesn't take much. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. The Port of Moses Lake is waiting for the legislator to pass two more bills before they can receive $21 million for the rail project. Governor Jay Inslee signed a two-year $38.2 billion state operating budget. The Port of Moses Lake's $20.9 million allocation of state funds to reconnect to industrial rail after 30 years was included in the $15 billion transportation package. The House must approve both the Senate Bill 5988, a spending package, and Senate Bill 5989 to issue bonds before any funds are released. The spending package requires a 60% majority for approval. Senator Judy Warnick said she is very excited the port's rail project was included in the transportation budget, along with rail projects for Warden and the Palouse Cooley City Railroad. A Moses Lake man is receiving drug treatment for fighting with police after he threatened to put his head into a deep fryer. Lionel Pando, a 29-year-old man, pleaded guilty in Grant County Superior Court to four counts of assault in the third degree, obstructing a law enforcement officer and resisting arrest. He was sentenced to three to six months of drug treatment. Pando went behind the deli counter at the Moses Lake Walmart on April 4th and began behaving erratically. He attacked an employee who tried to stop him, described seeing things, and tried to stick his head in a deep fryer. When the officer arrived, he, re he reported Pando was very erratic and yelling, help me. 
Pando let the officer place handcuffs on him and starting white fighting with him as they were escorting him out of the store. Pando admitted to smoking methamphetamine and marijuana before the incident. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this. Hello everybody, good to be with you. I'm Ceci Gutierrez with your local weather report from the One News Weather Center. And it is brought to you by iFiber One's Inside Look. Watch it today on iFiber1.com. Let's begin with a quick look at your headlines. Hot and dry conditions do continue on. We have a heat advisory in effect through this Friday around 9 o'clock. Be sure to take proper precautions. And in a bit, I'll be listing out some of these precautions or recommendations with this hot weather. Fire weather watch as we head into this 4th of July weekend, precisely Saturday, July 4th from 11 in the morning to around 9 at night. Here's a quick look at the temperatures that topped out during the past 24 hours across Ephraim around 102.77 the low and the sunset at 8.58 this evening and across Moses Lake, similar conditions. Average should be around the mid 80s and the record high established back in 2013 of 104 temperature or the sun setting at around 856 this evening. Here's a quick look. Conditions right outside your door dry and these hot temperatures continue with a northeasterly breeze at around four miles per hour. Now with that fire weather watch that promises to going to affect this Saturday, it will be a bit of a tricky scenario because we are anticipating for winds to pick up and on this weekend, throughout the weekend, and that will be only intensifying that fire weather watch across the area. Overall dry conditions, some scattered showers across the border into Canada and some cloud cover making its way through the region. Some scattered light rain inland northwest, but overall for us, dry conditions expected to dominate throughout the extended forecast, increasing cloud cover as we head into this Sunday. Here's a quick look for this Friday afternoon. We're expecting to wrap up this second week of summer with dry conditions. Notice those triple digit temperatures from Yakima into Ponteray with mostly sunny skies as well as across the basin temperatures above that 100 degree mark right around 106 is expected for Royal City and the rest of the region right around the lower 100. Here's a quick look as I was mentioning in the beginning of this segment, hot weather safety, limit physical activity, dress for summer, watch what you eat, drink plenty of water, stay out of direct sun, and preferably if you could, remain in air conditioned places, dry conditions, mostly sunny and 101 for this 4th of July. Good to be with you everybody. This segment brought to you by iFiber One's Inside Look. Watch it today on iFiberOne.com. Now to sports. The Apple Sox took a 4-1 lead into the bottom of the seventh but couldn't hold on and dropped a 5-4 game at Walla Walla. When Atchie went up top 1-0 in the third, the Sweets jumped out front 3-1 in the home half of the fifth. 
The Apple Sox regained the lead 4-3 on a two-run double by Keston Harura in the top of the seventh. Walla Walla tied it in the bottom half of the frame and then got a walk-off base on balls to win it in the ninth. The teams go at it tonight for the rubber game of the series. The Apple Sox at 8 and 12 are nearing the halfway point of the season. Reporter Sean Wells cut up with Wenatchee's Joey Jensen, the number two hitter on the roster who is batting for a 283 average to talk things over. Joey Jansen is an outfielder for the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Jansen is from Kennewick and plays college ball at Oregon State. This is his third stint playing for the Sox. He always enjoys being back in Wenatchee for the summer. Uh, it, it's nice to get a lot of at-bats and meet a bunch of new guys. It's fun because when we go into school season, we'll play against some of the same guys, and it's good to catch up and see everybody and playing against teammates right now, which is it's cool. It's just a lot of small connections that you have with other guys, and it's, it's good to get a lot of reps and a lot of at-bats, and it's a good time. Joey's motivation every summer is simple. He wants to continue to get better as a ball player by putting in hard work during each game in practice. Uh, just, just the motivation to get better every day. You know, we kind of show up to the park. We always have time to work on our own game, work with the team, and I think that's that's what drives us. Is we all want to win this thing at the end of the end of the summer, so and be as good as we can when we go back to school. And I think that's what what drives us all really. Joey's other team, the Oregon State Beavers, are a powerhouse program in college baseball. With multiple national championships, Joey takes pride in his team's accomplishments. He thinks the Beavers aren't too far away from contending for another title. Uh, we, were, we were real young this year and we actually made it to a regional and played real good and I came up a little short from where we wanted to be, but next year I think things are going to click. We got a lot of, all those younger guys are going to have one more year of experience. They're all playing this summer and come back and we got a good team chemistry, so I think we'll, we'll make a run for it. It'll be, it'll be a good time. For Fabro One News, Sean Wells. Four Seattle pitchers combined for a three-hit shutout, and the Mariners beat the Padres 7-0. Taiwan Walker got the nod and tossed six innings of one-hit ball before being lifted for a pinch hitter in the seventh. The 22-year-old got the win and is now 6-1 with a 1.68 ERA. Walker has proven to have one of the best arms on the team as of late, fanning 51 and allowing just three walks over his last seven starts. James Shields took the third straight loss for the Padres, giving up four hits and two runs off six and two-thirds innings. Both runs came off Robinson Cano's bat that included a solo home run to lead off the sixth. After hitting just 238 with four homers and 24 RBI on the season, Cano smacked four hits and five at-bats in the contest. Nelson Cruz added his 20th home run of the year on his 35th birthday, a two-run shot in Seattle's four-run ninth. Rowenis Elias will be on the mound when the M's open a four-game series tonight in Oakland. We'll be right back after this break. Our spotlight story tonight is about 4th of July celebrations throughout Grant County, providing safe and family fun entertainment. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. 4th of July celebrations mark Independence Day in Moses Lake, George, Soap Lake, and at Grand Coulee Dam. In Moses Lake, 4th of July events begin at 8 a.m. with the opening of the Farmer's Market at McCosh Park. The farmer's market raised money for this year's festivities. Events in Moses Lake include a food truck rodeo, arts in the park, and a bounce house for kids. The farmer's market will remain open until 3 p.m. Live entertainment starts at 10 a.m. at the park's Centennial Amphitheater. Cruise control and dime store profits play up until the fireworks show at dusk. The American Legion Honor Guard will present the colors with the singing of the national anthem prior to the fireworks show. George kicks off its event at 7 a.m. on the 4th with breakfast at the George Community Hall Kitchen. The Cherry Bomb Run starts at 8.30 a.m. A 10 a.m. parade runs down Montmorency Boulevard fronting the Community Hall with registration at 9 a.m. 
The Georgette's construction of a giant cherry pie at Rotary Pie Pavilion takes place in the morning. The pie, which has been constructed each year since the 1950s, will be served at noon for $1 apiece. Live music begins at 12.20 on stage in the park and runs until dusk when a fireworks display is launched in George. Soap Lake celebrates Smokayam Days on Saturday with a parade featuring banners that honor fallen heroes from Washington State. The parade along Main Avenue begins at 11 a.m. with a freight of musician Mary Leffelbein singing the national anthem at Kennett and Main. A Soap Lake Senior Center pancake breakfast is served beginning at 7 a.m. The center is located at 121 2nd Avenue Southeast. At 1 p.m., barbecued beef and salmon is to be served on Noteris Lodge's lawn at 236 Main Avenue East. The 4th of July Festival of America takes place at Grand Coulee Dam Saturday and Sunday in the park below Grand Coulee Dam Visitor Center. Arts, crafts, and foods are served from 11 a.m. to 9.45 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. A beer garden is open from 2 to 9 p.m. Live music plays at 5.30 p.m. Saturday and 4 p.m. Sunday. Fireworks launch off the Grand Coulee Dam at 10 p.m. after the laser light show. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We will be right back after this. The Dodge Brothers' competitive spirit and engineering prowess started long before they built their first car and will continue long after their latest, the most technologically advanced vehicle in its class. Welcome back. A load of rags ignited a dryer in a Quincy laundromat. The fire started about 11 a.m. on Wednesday morning at Plaza Laundry on 13th Avenue when the load of rags being dried began burning. Grant County Fire District 3 firefighters extinguished the fire in about 10 minutes. Assistant Chief Tony Lee Belt said firefighters blew the smoke out of the two storefronts affected. The building didn't suffer any structural damage and no one was injured. A woman was hit by a car while riding her bicycle in Moses Lake on Tuesday night. Samantha Hogan, an 18-year-old Moses Lake woman, was riding her bike on South Division Street, attempting to cross 7th Avenue at the crosswalk when she was struck by a 2004 Dodge Neon turning right onto 7th Avenue. According to Moses Lake Police, Hogan suffered minor injuries and was taken to Samaritan Hospital in Moses Lake and released. The driver of the car, 32-year-old Moses Lake resident Stephen Yearout, was not injured. Hogan was reportedly wearing all black clothing and did not have a light on her bike. The collision is under investigation. In Northwest News, according to Washington State Patrol investigators, two men are suspected of sparking nine brush fires as they drove along I-5 through Snohomish and Skagit County. A deputy says he saw two men in their 50s driving a Hyundai Sonata stop along the freeway and were trying to light a fire with a road flare. A deputy tried to stop them, but they fled. Troopers are still looking for the men. A few guys have one drink too many and get into a fight. Doesn't sound that unusual, but court documents claim that happened with a group of Border Patrol agents. They reportedly got into a big brawl right after a union event. Reporter Allison Ash spoke with one of those agents. It's not right to jump somebody in the parking lot. Border Patrol agent James Harlan used to be the president of the local Border Patrol Union, but this is what he looked like after the last union meeting. When he claims this man, Robert Lopez, and the man standing beside him, Thomas Ward, attacked Harlan and Samir Korda. And I look over and I see Sam Korda with a bloody face, and he looked pretty badly beat up. It was after the June 9th meeting at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Mission Valley when Harlan claims Lopez and Ward, who were both drunk, confronted them. So they start walking towards us in a very aggressive manner. And Robert Lopez starts yelling vulgarities at me and accuses me of calling him out and we're going to take care of it. The next thing Harlan knew, Lopez had pushed him down. And he started kicking me in the head. And then he straddled me and started wailing me with both fists the sides of my heads and my ears. In his request for a temporary restraining order, Lopez told a different story. 
writing that it was Harlan who was visibly intoxicated, that one of Harlan's friends had skipped out on a bar tab. Lopez claimed that man, Everlyn Prado, along with Corda and Harlan, were the aggressors, saying Harlan raised his voice and used foul language. I observed him charging me, and I was forced to defend myself. That's a lie. All five men appeared in Chula Vista court to withdraw their temporary restraining orders so they could get their weapons back and get back on the job, protecting our nation's borders. Just hope that the criminal justice system and the good Lord can protect us. That's going to do it for us here at I-Fiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.